Alright guys, just want to talk about MGTOW transition, because I do think MGTOW is far broader than just guys going their own way, and I know a lot of people say, but it is men going their own way. Yes, but I actually do think there's a lot of fundamental things within MGTOW which is important to any person, male or female, because here in Spain I talk to a lot of women, uh, surprising, you know, somebody actually talked about MGTOW and spends time with women. Well, a lot of the women here um, are predominantly the, the ones I talk to are from Scandinavia, UK, Iceland, all over the place. But um, one of the things I do recognize is that a lot of this stuff is very similar. And I've got to admit, I mean, a lot of the issues they've had, they've been, you know, independent women, etc., come here with their pensions, etc. But I think what this fits with is the demographic. Um, is because it's an older generation. As such, they have a lot of traditional values, which also they recognize the new feminists as being, or the modern feminists, as I'm going to call them, are not what was their generation of feminism, which was very, very different, which were, was more tied to trying to get equality and rights and getting pay in line with the same job and that sort of stuff, where today it's very, very different from that. But anyway, moving forward. Um, first thing I want to talk about is emotion, and this is for the transition. The emotion, you need to take responsibility for your emotions and recognize a lot of stuff we do is based on emotions. Um, it's In a relationship, you can be quite uptight with people, and at the same time, you can be manipulated sometimes as well if you're with the wrong partner. You've got... Um, I, I've talked about this before, where there was a, a guy that was coming out of the house, he's got this annoying uh, girlfriend or wife's voice with that screechy uh, sound and he starts arguing with me because he can't back his car off his illegal driveway illegally reversing onto the main road because I'm sat in traffic because I'm, I'm actually driving though this way I can sit and engage with him because I'm actually the passenger but at the same time was it me there was a problem the answer to that is no he's just come out of his house he's late for work He's arguing with his girlfriend or wife, and that emotion is being deflected from where the problem is to me, as if I care. I'm just finished work for the day, I'm chilled out, I couldn't care, I've got all day. I could sit there and not, not care less, but the guy is very irate, and it's because the deflection is coming from the issues that he's got at home. Now, that is one example of where people can have stuff impact their lives because of somebody else and in those types of relationships I do recommend just walking away from them they're not going to improve they, the party you're with will always be like that because it's normally attention seeking it's normally self-centered it's normally around me 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 and which is why you get wound up with it because you're going I've got work to go to but I need to go to my mum's or that sort of stuff and you're like but you can walk to your mum's you know, it's a, that's the sort of stuff I'm talking about, where they could have gone earlier and just sat there and waited until you're going to work and thought, I'll get a lift, but now making you late because they didn't bother considering telling you an hour earlier so that you could actually leave the house earlier. It's just like, I'll just wait because I don't care if he gets to work late because it's not my problem. So emotions are a big issue, and part of MGTOW is recognizing these things get manipulated on you. The same goes with um, a lot of the media are getting fed. A lot of the media is counterproductive in recognizing that a lot of it is to feed on your emotions and get annoyed or whatever. Personally, I cut about 90% of it off. Um, it's why some people try to bait me into debates relating to other people and things, and I simply just go delete, ban, block. Don't care. It's not my problem. Um, if it's not constructive, I'm not interested. But then there is another scenario where you can get baited into giving, um, which is another thing that's quite common where I was in the UK. And I've seen a few people do it, and I've seen this old guy doing it with this um, very young uh, woman in the Philippines where he paid for all her house and everything, and then they basically her parents threw him out. Why the guy was living in her parents' house, and I mean, I'm talking about the girls. Lucky if she's 20 years old, and the guy's probably about early 70s, and he's sitting there crying, 
because she's left him and threw him out in the house and he wants to pay to come back. He wants to pay to come back. He's not angry that he just um, invested everything into this and been thrown out. He wants to um, go back to what he had, yet at the same time he doesn't even recognize he's been played. He doesn't even recognize it at all. And the thing is, even in the construction industry, I've seen guys doing this. I've seen guys that are on these three-day relationships. I brought this up before, where the woman lives on the council estate or whatever, to, so she doesn't get her, account, uh, her benefits affected. She will only have a guy stop over a maximum of three nights a week in case the neighbors report her for having a guy living there. So these are three-day relationships, normally on the weekends, because when we're doing construction work or whatever, we're not at home anyway. But the point being is, these guys will go, oh, I'm on a promise this weekend. It's like, well, what's she got you doing? Well, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna fit a new kitchen. Or I promised I'll get her a new washing machine. I'm going, why? <laughs> why? Why are you selling yourself into this stuff? Um, you're basically buying into um, a trade-off. It's not a relationship, it's a trade-off. Somebody wants something, they're going to give you something in return. That's not a relationship because I tell you now, if she's doing that with you, there's a good chance she's doing it with at least another two other guys. But anyway, that's emotion. Emotion, disconnect yourself from a lot of this stuff. Recognize the, your own emotions as well as how other people try to manipulate your emotions. Uh, next one is financial control. Take control of your finances more. A lot of people don't. Um, I know some people that have their relatives manage their finances. I know other people that are in relationships where they are not controlling their own money in the sense that they've got shared bank accounts or whatever. Um, if you're looking to go your own way or looking to at least take more control of your life, you need to take control of your finances. And I also recognize that a lot of people do not save, they do not invest for the future, they do not do enough on that side, but may actually spend money on the wrong stuff. Getting that new suit or something on a Friday it's because you're worried about debt or something, you know, whatever it is. You know, whether you go out and spend all the money on a Friday night because you know you're still going to be on debt on Monday. Stop paying the debt off. It's going to be painful. It's going to be a short-term problem. Long term, you're going to come out the other end. Long term, you're going to have that money plus what you would have given away in interest. So you're going to be in a much better position in the future. But it starts with taking responsibility for your finances. Next one is responsibility. Responsibility is not just about, um, like I say, taking responsibility for your finances, but also recognizing your own problems. If you are aggressive with people and yet you're in a front-facing business, you either got to recognize that you're in the wrong business or you need to adapt. Um, but at the same time, when you come out of a relationship and it's bad, recognize where your failures were. Don't just focus on, I hate that person, which is what a lot of guys do. Um, focus on why the relationship failed, why did you get into the relationship, what was the main problems, what did you do that was wrong, and identify all the key elements because if you can, you can then start moving forward. You know, whether you, like I said, you know, if you're gonna go full MGTOW and live on your own, it stops you getting into a similar situation. Or if you decide to go with it, somebody else later, you will do certain things in a different way, but only if you recognize it. For example, was the relationship rushed? Did you move in together in the first six months? Did, you know, whatever it is. Because if you actually focus on, okay, well that was stupid, and yeah, I was manipulated into that and I didn't really want it or whatever. That's fine. It's recognizing it as the key element to this. Um, the other thing is focus. Focus on change. Focus on yourself. Focus on responsibility. Focus on getting where you want to be in life. And it's not always about finance. A lot of stuff focus on wealth out there. How to be wealthy. Um, how to be this. Being happy is something that also a lot of people say um, isn't really true. It's, it's, it comes from a com com combination of different things. Financial, financial security is one of them. 
having either being in a relationship um, and you're content in the relationship or having zero relationship and doing what you want they're all about that level of happiness these are things that become part of your life where you become content because content is tied with happiness whether you know because I'm not going to get into debate some people say happiness doesn't exist but the point being is being content and sustainable are two important things to that and which I would combine into happiness just general happiness well-being whatever you want to call it um, but it starts with focusing on making it happen the next thing is trust I generally don't trust anybody, as people well know. It's a bit like my mechanic at the moment. He's still got my car at the minute. Do I trust him? The answer is no. The guy doesn't know what he's doing relating to car repairs, etc. But it's tied in with their with a warranty. It goes back to responsibility. I made the stupid mistake of buying a new, a fairly new car uh, here in Spain when I should have bought brand new and just paid a little bit extra, and then got it serviced when I went back to the UK. I recognize my mistake, stupid me, but at the same time, that's part of this, it's part of that process. And the thing with this, with the trust, recognize what you can trust and what you can't trust. Recognize that a lot of stuff out there is set for failure, it's supposed to fail. I mean, look at all these Chinese imports of stuff that simply don't work the day you buy it. I mean, eBay, how much of that stuff even works? Um, the design flaws in a lot of stuff. I mean, we had, I mean, a simple thing like a um, clip for the mobile phone that goes on the dashboard. It heated and the rubber fell off. It's a design fault. Yet they've probably sold about six million of the things, and yet they don't work. So recognize that that is today's society. They want your trust, but they haven't earned it. This is why you all get politicians that will use the word trust you can trust me on this or whatever because in reality they're trying to force you to do something you shouldn't be doing the reality is what you should be doing is recognizing somebody has to earn your trust and it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't matter if you're dating somebody you know because obviously like I said I'm, I'm more broad than completely on on your own um, but you need to recognize that if you're in a relationship how does that trust get earned? Somebody automatically assumes that they can move into your house, do this, do that. You're probably in the wrong relationship. If somebody's too comfortable with you straight away, why is that? Why is it, the, are you too easy a walkover? Uh, is there something that they assume that they can do what they want and it's always gonna be okay with you? There's gonna be a lot of related reasons in your life where trust should be evaluated. In my career, for example, I knew there was many things wrong with the business I was working for and at the same time within <laughs> within my realms of common sense I followed company policies relating to grievances and bringing up the issues that were in the business and so they tried to blackmail me out of it and is that trust well I trusted them to actually do what was right and at the end of the day they've been stealing the money for years <laughs> Um, but there you go, even I get burned on stuff. I mean, Carillion stole billions, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a small theft, by the way. Um, but the whole point is I was flagging it up three years ahead of the collapse, and they tried to force me out of it. Um, but even that, I take responsibility for my own actions. I'd been played on that, in the sense that I'd done everything I needed to do, I'd analyzed everything, come up with all the right plans and everything, but at the same time, they were analyzing the risks on things in a different way. I'm risking, I'm analyzing to make things viable. They're analyzing for what they could take, in my personal opinion, um, because they've been skimming off the top for a long time. I'm not talking thousands, I'm talking millions. Millions upon millions have been disappearing for probably about 10 years. But not at my level, not my pay grade. It'd be nice if it was, but no. Um, but all this is part of development and I do think it's important that people recognize that fundamentally you're responsible for yourself. Fundamentally recognize that if it's down to confidence and stuff, focus on it. Focus on making those changes. Why? What is making you unhappy? What makes you insecure? What is it? 
Um, because I'm not saying everybody has this or that. I'm saying if you have any of this, you need to focus on it and change it. Uh, insecurities often come from a lot of the things are in the environment that we're in today. But at the same time, once you realize that it doesn't matter, then you're past that. I mean, it's like when people send me abusive emails or stupid messages on here. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. At the end of the day, I sit there and go, what's wrong in your life? That's it. Boom. Gone. Because at the end of the day, I'm content. I'm happy. I'm doing what I want to do. And at the same time, I'm quite happy to share the fact that it's achievable for anybody if you put the time in. Thanks for watching.